Now it's been a couple of months now since I've made the switch from Nissan to Subaru and a lot of people have been asking, what do you think of the Subaru? So today I'm going to tell you all the things that totally suck about this car. We're going to start from the front of the vehicle and as you look at it from side on, you wouldn't be surprised if you thought you were looking at an amphibious vehicle from World War II. The front of the car looks like a boat. If you're going to buy one, it's the first thing you need to fix. The second thing you need to fix is that chrome grille. It looks like crap. I do need to mention the rear lights on this car, which look like absolute crap. The earlier model Forester lights looked so much better, but these ones, it looks like the rear lights have eaten too much Maccas and they're now extending out, gaping holes into the panels of the car and extending down the side with a ridiculous piece of glass. Now, when I first picked up this car from the Sunshine Coast, I had to drive it out 1,200 kilometers back to Sydney. And the first thing that I noticed is just how frightening the suspension is. Now, the car from the factory is so high, it can be used as a bungee jumping platform. Platform. It's just ridiculous and when you drive around the corner you turn the wheel and about three or four seconds later the weight transfers and you feel like the car is going to fall over. Now apparently in subsequent models of this Forester they fixed that. Uh, first thing I did was went down to a lowered spring that took four centimeters off the height and then after that fully adjustable pedal suspension and get it a bit lower again. Now of course dragging a boat of this size around the land uses a lot of fuel and the fuel economy is absolute rubbish. Uh, of course you can kind of make some changes with that with a tune. Um, I put on the Easy Flash tune, this not only gives you some more power, uh, but it also makes the fuel economy uh, better by around about 20%. Now one of the most frightening things about this car is that the accelerator doesn't seem to be connected at all to the engine. It feels like the accelerator is connected to an old Morse code unit and when you put your foot down, someone starts going beep, 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 and someone else says to the engine, oh, you'd better accelerate now. It is actually frightening. The very first time I realized that the accelerator is not actually connected to the car was when I was accelerating towards a corner. And then once I got to kind of the, the tightest bit of the corner, I took my foot off the accelerator. The car keeps accelerating. You can take your foot completely off the accelerator. The car will keep accelerating for another second. It is absolutely frightening. Get to 4,000 RPM. As the needle hits the 4,000, pull your foot right off the accelerator and you'll see it keeps climbing. It's ridiculous. All right, let's move inside the car and let's have a little chat about the GPS. Now, GPS is pretty handy. It saves a lot of relationships. The GPS in this car absolutely sucks. You can put your address in, but then if you want to cancel that guidance, it is actually easier to find your way into the depths of the catacombs of the Great Pyramid then actually guide your way through the menu system to cancel the guidance. Now, like most cars these days, the GPS is connected to the handbrake, so you cannot use it while the car is moving. Now, this probably made sense to some safety expert somewhere, but it's actually utterly crap. If somebody's sitting in your passenger seat and you need them to put in directions, you can't do it unless you either pull over on the side of the road, which sometimes in Sydney is impossible, or you've got to drive along with the handbrake on, which, I don't know, doesn't sound very safe. Hear that? If you have 1.5 kilos of weight sitting on the passenger seat, the car says that person doesn't have a seatbelt on. Now, do you know anyone who weighs 1.5 kilos other than Victoria Beckham? No, and I don't think David Beckham owns a Forester, which means for anybody that wants to leave their laptop on the seat next to them, you can't do it because the car will scream at you the whole time. It will literally beep until your ears bleed because there's 1.5 kilos of pressure on the passenger seat. It is absolute crap. Let's say you're driving along and you get home to your driveway at home. You take your seatbelt off. Car starts beeping. Oh, okay. I'm just pulling into my driveway. Oh, now I've stopped. Why are you still beeping at me? I'm not going anywhere. Why are you beeping? What's going on? Oh, I'll get out of my seat. There is now no weight on my seat at all. Nothing. The car will continue to scream. I could open my door and get out. Buy a drink, get back in. 
it is still screaming at me to put my seatbelt on even though I'm not moving. I've, I'm, I'm not even in my seat. You can get out of the car. It will continue to scream until your ears bleed and your brain explodes. That is absolute crap. Let me paint this picture for you. It's a Sunday morning. The weather's beautiful. You wake up and decide to go for a spirited drive in your land boat. You're about to head out sailing in your Forester when you think, you know what? I'm gonna make today special. I'm gonna wash my car. I'm gonna give it a full detail and then hit the road. So you spend two or three hours polishing it, making sure it looks mad. You're driving along the highway. Next thing you know, some dirty bird takes a massive dump on your windscreen, covers it in bird turd. Now, normally that wouldn't be a problem, but in a Forester, yes, it's a massive problem because as you press this button to clean the windscreen, the car says, you know what? I'm gonna open two more nozzles at the front of the car and eject crap all over your whole car, the whole car. Now, a lot of Forester owners actually have to go and cut the wires so they don't open anymore. You know what that is? That's crap. Now, don't get me wrong. I do like Subarus. They are ugly, all of them, but they are functional and they are practical. But there's a lot of things about them that are crap. In fact, there's a lot of things about a lot of things that are crap and feel free to share the crap things with us about your car on the Mighty Car Mods Forum right here, forums.mightycarmods.com. Let's make a list of all the things that suck about our cars. After owning so many mad Nissan Turbo cars, you may feel like me that this rant was justified. But the truth is that the longer I own this Forester, the more I like it. In fact, I'm even starting to think it looks good. And each little fault is like a little piece of evidence that suggests that the car actually has some much needed character after all. Whether the car's full of people or full of gear, it just keeps delivering with comfort and power. The ever practical Subaru. So with all the modifications that I've done so far, I started thinking, would I swap this back for my old Nissan Sylvia? No way. I'd get a double garage and I'd have both. I'll see you probably in the car park of a Bunnings doing something very practical with my Subaru.